Um, Ireland was awesome for those who are yes. asking. Yes. I got to visit a lot of family and see a lot of really pretty sights. And I really didn't want to come back, but I did. See, you've gone to Ireland. Todd's gone to Ireland. Lizzie's gone to Ireland. I'm fucking jealous all y'all motherfuckers going to Ireland. You've Cut been multiple times. Well, I've been, I was there when I was two, when I was 13, and last week. Uh, it's amazing. It's gorgeous there. Uh, and there, you know, there's lots of beer there. And I got in trouble with my cousins for ordering a Coke at the bar. They were like, don't Coke do that. And, Coke and, and I'm like, rum, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This week. You know what? I, I have no no other idea just to just start flying with this one because holy God. Okay. It, yeah. Um, let's start the intro. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh, we're starting off with a follow up. Um. You know, when you have sex with an ass, you make an ass out of you and me. Uh, I don't know if you remember this one. This was the. I don't uh, think I'm allowed to comment on this yeah. one. I got in a lot of trouble. This is from the uh, the um, the the bestiality documentary. Remember yeah, this, this one? Yeah, this got me in a lot of trouble. Um, apparently, uh, the film festival uh, that that's uh, the Akinagan. Akin again? Akin again? Akin again? Okahagen. Okahagen. No, there's no H in there. Okay. Okanagan. Okanagan. Okay, Okanagan. I can't I speak. that in for an H. That's weird. Okanagan Film Festival uh, is under fire over a controversial documentary about Colombian men having sex with donkeys. It's canceled all public screenings after organizers were unable to secure a venue. So basically what happened was people said... Um, can we not show the donkey fucking video here? Please. Yeah. Can can we not do that? I can't imagine why that would be a problem. <laughs> and it got even worse. Um, the festival was set to open uh, at the landmark Paramount Theater. Word spread and angry petitions online came out against a screening. Soon after, theater officials opted to cancel the entire festival. Wow. This is why you don't bring a donkey fucking video to your film festival. I mean, yeah, basically. You got nothing on that. You, you don't want to get any more trouble. I don't want to get any more trouble because I got in trouble with the Australians because they thought I was calling them all donkey fuckers, which I was not, by the way, Australia. Learn reading comprehension. That probably helped me none, but whatever. No, it didn't. Get a sense of humor, goddammit. And I got in trouble with the choir pedantic for not pointing out multiple times that the film was made in South America and not in Australia. And apparently that's my fault. I, so I just, I'm going to leave this one alone because I. Okay. Well. I've gotten myself in too much trouble. Speaking of getting yourself in too much trouble. Oh, dear. Do you remember um what was it, those the jerky boys? You remember them? Yes. And for those of you youngins who do not recall, um there there was a uh, duo named the Jerky Boys back in before the 90s. Crank yeah, before crank anchors, before the internet. They yeah. would God. Yeah, they're they, old. They, You're older. They would <laughs> Pretty much make a whole bunch of crank phone calls, record them, and then sell the albums of mm. back when they still made records. Um, and it is a time honored tradition of calling people up. And is your refrigerator running? If so, you should go and catch it. Are there any walls there? How does your house? How does your roof stay up? Do you, you have, have Prince Albert, Albert in a can? can? You should let him out then. We used to call people and, and, and sing them a jingle that we made up about chicken pizza. 
I don't know why we thought that was funny. Well, even that seems to make more sense than what this gentleman did. Um, this is from the UK. Bachelor bombarded people with thousands of nuisance calls saying his manhood was stuck in household objects. Gareth Lloyd told people his penis was stuck in a jam jar or a vacuum cleaner, and he made almost 6,000 calls in three months. And let's, let's, uh, oh, we have to, oh, look at him. He's yeah. A, he's a cuddly puppy. It's like his face is on crooked. Because like, <laughs> it looks like there's a big chunk of his beard missing. Like he's like, he's like a Picasso or something. Yeah, that's six to seven a day, Zaretta points out. Seven for, just all day. Um, let's see. Lloyd of uh, uh, Hollywell. Yeah, Lloyd of Hollywell, uh, who cares for his elderly mother, made 5,800 calls from an unregistered pay-as-you-go mobile phone in just three months. British Telephone tracked the number to the unregistered <laughs> phone, but police had struggled to find him. He was only caught when his number came up on a mobile phone officers were analyzing. Um... Court heard some of the calls were of a sexual nature, but he never went into explicit detail. There was no obscene threats, language, or threats of violence. Apparently, all he did was just call people up and say, "Hey, I, uh, my dick's in a vacuum." No, 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 it's a vacuum. You go phone with a pace. A burner. You paid phone. Yeah, like, you paid money out yep. of your pocket yep. to do this to people not use your four million rollover minutes to do this to people no you paid out of pocket for this asinine bullshit it's like you know you remember how you used to have um if you wanted the time or the weather you'd call up and there was a, there was a phone number you call and it would tell you yeah. what the correct time at the tone, the time dark will be kids, dark days. Well, this guy is doing the same thing, only it's a it's a penis update. It's it's a constant update. He needs one of those websites, you know, one of those auto generated websites like has Game of Thrones season, season three started yet dot com. <laughs> and when you go to the site, it just says no until it starts. And then it says yes. What's he my needs, like? What is my dick stuck in today dot com? Oh God! Now I'm now I'm just thinking of where you and know it's like randomly generates like jam jar, pneumatic tube. You remember where in the world is the guy who went out dancing? Yes. Yeah. Where in the world is my penis? There you go. Put a little Carmen San Diego hat on it. <laughs> he needs to embrace the World Wide Web. You, you know, someone right control so many more people for so much less money. Someone right now, yeah, where the hell is Matt? Yeah, where the hell is my penis? Someone right now with just a tiny bit of JavaScript coding ability is sitting there going, I can make this website. I could totally do this. Today, my dick is stuck in a beagle. You know, it's just... I I bet you somebody has that website up before the end of the show. They will. (laughs) Kiwi fruit. Is it in a box? Is it with a fox? (laughs) Is it here or is it there? <laughs> is it stuck in your underwear? Uh, Probably not. Uh, it's not supposed to be. The question is, my question is. Was he lying or did he really get his dick stuck in places and then call people to tell him about it? <laughs> did his and, mom just get tired of hearing about it? He had to. Had to tell someone else. Which is worse? (laughs) I don't want to know. Okay, well, this one, this next one's from North Carolina, and um, not we didn't go to Comic Con. You, uh, we, we, I wanted to, but didn't have the money. But um, apparently, something interesting happened at Comic Con. The ATMs in New York, um. In the the Javits Center, I think it's is it Javits Center? Is that Javits. Javits, with, Javits a with a J. Okay, in the Javits Center, um, the ATMs would take your card, would subtract the money from your account, and just not give you money. Oh, so they had to put signs on them saying, "Don't stick your fucking ATM card in here." And oh, I, that sucks. And that would piss you off, right? 
you know, because suddenly you, you want to get a hundred bucks out and your account says, OK, your mine is a hundred bucks, but you don't actually get the money. Well, I think this woman took things a step too far. This is from North Carolina. Woman lights vending machine on fire <laughs> after losing money. And oh, yes, let's have a look. Surveillance footage. There is North video Carolina going toe to toe with a vending machine. This happened in the town of New Bern. Police say she was mad that the machine took her cash, but it was a soda machine. Drink, so yep. Check that shit out. Watch it. Watch the video. There she goes. It lights that shit on fire. Boom. Okay, now I, I likes my Pepsi. <laughs> I, I I takes my Pepsi very serious. Never have I ever contemplated lighting a Pepsi machine on fire for not giving me my Pepsi. It's been a while. But how much does a Pepsi cost out of a machine these days? A buck? About a buck fifty usually. About a buck fifty. Okay. Yeah. Um that's okay. Potentially you've lost a dollar fifty. There are worse fates. Do you wish to compound this by losing several thousand on lawyers and arrests and lawsuits and because they're not going to just let you burn up their their Coke machine. <gasps> no, I know. I totally know what happened here. What? Okay. She had just seen the first X Files movie, and when the machine didn't spit out her soda, obviously she assumed it was because there was a giant IED hidden inside the soda machine, like the one Mulder found that he wasn't supposed to in the first ten minutes of the movie, and she was trying to provide a public service by exposing it. Still, call the bomb squad lady. What? Don't look at me like that. How the hell did we get here? Because in the X-Files movie, there was a giant bomb inside the soda machine. I feel I feel like what I feel like what happens when the GPS tells me to drive into the water. <laughs> have you ever Google mapped the have you ever Google mapped directions to Mordor? No, I have not. And then put it on the walk. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Yeah, it does that. I love Google, but it, of all the things, yeah, she lit a, uh, a newspaper on fire and stuffed it inside the machine. That's overreacting a little bit. A little bit, yeah, because uh, they don't like it when you destroy their fucking property. Is soda flowable in cans? No, it is not. But it's pressurized, so like all nope. those cans probably exploded. No, they didn't explode. You have to, it's a refrigerated unit. You have to get them really, really hot. That was a pretty big fire, though. It's a couple of newspapers. It probably it fucked up. It looked like a pretty big fire. Well, what it probably did was it probably fucked up the plastic front of the machine by setting that on fire. You know, that flexible plastic bit they put. Yeah, I did that to my old TV when we were kid. When I was a kid, we had a freestanding TV that was all plastic because it was the 80s and it had a plastic net over the speaker or grid thing and uh i i turned i got hot and i wasn't allowed to use the space heater by myself so i just turned it away from me trying to be good and not mess with it and i melted the speaker off the tv but my mom couldn't get mad at me because i was good and i didn't mess with the dial on the space heater because i wasn't allowed so she was like well you broke the tv but you were trying to be obedient so how do you yeah. uh, you always have this horrible story of someone <laughs> hurt or on fire or something from Both your childhood my childhood is like a combination of rose nyland from golden girls meets saw <laughs> seriously yeah okay um I'm losing my voice as we're doing this i'm sorry i'm not catholic you 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 you've in a big catholic family um, I so I don't know how the whole confession thing is supposed to work. I assume there's some there, there's some pre arranged ritual and you go in and you deal with uh, you deal with a priest in a certain way. You know, you sit down, you talk to him and I, I assume that there's there's a standardization for this stuff, right? Well, you go in, you you, you know, bless me, father, for I have sinned. It has been such and such since my last confession. 
you tell them what you've done. They generally will talk you through it. Sometimes you have questions, whatever. They'll talk to you about it. And then they will give you an appropriate penance, which is what you're going to do to atone. Sometimes it's say this many prayers. Sometimes it's, you know, apologize to the person you've wronged. Just, you know, then you say an act of contrition, which is a specific prayer. And then, you know, you go about your way. Okay. So, um, what's the appropriate for this? Man interrupts church, tells congregation he's on bath salts. Hawkins County deputies chase down alleged hammer wielding bath salts user Sunday morning who reportedly interrupted a church service in the Ross campground community just uh, north of the Hawkins County section of Kingsport. Shortly after 11 a.m. Sunday, uh, deputies responded to the church on a complaint of a man interrupting to announce he was on bath salts before fleeing on foot. Well, okay, yeah, you almost never do confession in public, first of all. Yeah. I, a little boost. Points for honesty, my friend. However, the Russian judge has to take a few points off for style. That Russian judge is such a dick. Such a dick. <laughs> what the is hell? He naked? Um, it does not say he no, was naked. Okay. Because bath salts, I've come to assume they're naked. Naked? Well, he had a hammer, so... And besides, it was early in the day. It was only 11 a.m. There's plenty of time to get naked. Plenty of time. What was with the hammer? I know! Didn't we have a guy just two weeks ago who broke into a church to announce he was on PCB? Yes! He was naked. He was naked. This guy wasn't naked. It's funny how many of these fucking stories recur. We have yeah. themes and shit going. It, it's weird. Like, it, it's it's almost like, I know you don't watch Fringe, but the first season was all about something called The Pattern, which uh -huh. was like weird shit happening everywhere, and it was happening in a pattern. I feel like I'm on Fringe, and we're discovering the pattern. <laughs> and we just haven't worked out what it all means yet. We haven't found the alternate universe where there are Zeppelins, and you and me have respectable jobs. I... I'm trying. I'm trying to imagine the priest or the the preacher. I, it doesn't say if it's Baptist, Catholic, what. I'm just trying to imagine the the uh, guy conducting the service after yeah. this is done. He goes, "I'm on bath salts." Bye. There you go from there. Yeah, and then you come back up. You do you announce that the, you know the, the bake sale after that? Well, you know, Luke was notoriously a drunk, so a really good think on his feet preacher could tie it back into that. <laughs> and be like, look, even the most egregious addict can make something of himself. That dude wrote a gospel. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> oh, that's that's, that's kind of like going on after Elvis, though, you know? Yeah, it's a tough act to follow. It's a very tough act to follow. What if they're sitting out in the, in the pews going, can you get a hammer? Just, you know, liven this up. That guy you know, had a hammer. I'm just looking for one divine hammer. <laughs> Obscure reference. Nobody in the channel will get that because they don't know that the breeders had more than one song. Mm. Philistines. We are. Well, no, they, they are. They are, yeah. I probably qualify, but for different reasons. Um... Oh, OK. I don't like people. This is no secret. And I've often said. I would be so happy to just go away from all civilization in general. Yes, but then you become the Unabomber. Or you can't be left to your own devices, because then you'll start building explosives and mailing them to people. Or like, you become I this guy. Man living in cave for years says he's not bothering anyone. Some say he walks around naked, scaring people. El Paso, Texas. Uh, people hiking uh, McKellington Canyon expected a stunning view of the mountain and city, maybe even a glimpse of a, a rabbit or other wildlife. They don't expect to see a naked man who's been living in a cave for three years. And I've just got to pause here. You're not going to get this joke. Most of you at home are not going to get this joke. But Arthur Dent says hi. 
Yeah, you won't continue. Um, from Hitchhiker's Guy. Yes. So uh, a couple people got it. Okay, there you go. There you go. Um, a group of friends said their Sunday morning hike was spoiled when they came upon a mysterious cave that had furniture, personal effects, and other signs someone was living there. Um, out of nowhere, a naked man jumped out of the cave, chasing the hikers down the mic down the mountain and giving them quite a scare. Okay, you know what? That's their own fault. You come upon a cave that someone is obviously living in, that is someone's domicile, and your instinct is, excuse me, to hang around and shoot video. Someone lives there. They're probably going to object, and they're probably going to show up and want to say something about it. And if they're living in a cave in the middle of the woods, they're probably crazy. You find a cave in the middle of the woods that someone's obviously living in, you walk away from it and go about your fucking business. On the other hand, I got a feeling this guy was just sitting in that cave waiting for this all day. This was like the highlight of his. He's like, wait for it. No, wait he's probably just a random crazy person it. who doesn't want people hanging around his place. It's probably the equivalent of get off my damn lawn. Except instead of get off my lawn, you kids, it was. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you find the domicile of an obviously crazy person, leave it alone. Don't poke the crazy people. And if you do, you don't get to bitch that they ruined your day because you poked them. Um, along the path to his cave, dead snakes in a liquid could be found. Oh, OK, well, that's a little extra special. Yeah. He said the snakes in the tin were for animals in the mountain and not his own food. What? He also talked to, oh, this is just weird. He also talked about President Obama and Mitt Romney calling one the black bush and the other the white bush. Because, yeah, I want to go to pull for political analysis from the guy, naked guy living in the cave on the mountain. Did he watch the debate? On a burning bush? <laughs> oh. Oh. I just, yeah, it's like, you know, what are you, are you auditioning for Fox News here? If he lives in a cave, how the fuck does he even know who's running for president? Does he have cable in that cave? Well, he's got nobody has dead snakes. Dead snakes don't broadcast CNN. <laughs> I don't care what liquid you put them in. I take if dead snakes and liquid would give you cable. I would have a bucket of dead snakes and liquid right now. I take that but as a I challenge. Don't. Well, you let me know how that goes for you. OK, our last two stories tonight. I can't decide which is worse. It's real. And they're both in the same ballpark, which makes it even worse. Um, I loved my grandma. Both of my grandmothers were wonderful ladies. And they, they sometimes sometimes they're a little strict because I was a stupid little monkey child, as most children <laughs> are stupid little monkey children. And I would do stupid things occasionally. But most of the time, they were very nice women. Mm hmm. I want to remind you all that this, ladies and gentlemen, is somebody's grandma. Police. Naked grandma who offered police sexual favors arrested on child neglect charges from Indianapolis. A woman caring for her two year old granddaughter was arrested on child neglect charges Tuesday after offering sexual favors to police responding to a welfare check. When officers arrived at the address, police said the woman began cursing and screaming through a locked door. After making entry into the residence, police said they found a nude woman, Jacqueline Burst, 53, and the crying toddler, also naked, on the bed. Police said Burst attempted to assault officers and she was quickly handcuffed. According to police reports, Burst then offered to perform sexual favors on the officers. It's not really funny. Just sort of scary and sad. 
Well, I'm I'm kind of, you know, she's she's all like, ah, and then you get the handcuffs on. It's like, so who wants a blowjob? My ex-husband used to work uh, in an FYE store and he you'd be amazed the number of people who will offer sexual favors to get out of shit because he caught shoplifters and he got offered more stuff from more teenage girls. Yeah. Wow. Over over a fucking CD. And he's like, really? The CD's worth that to you? Damn. No shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Of course. CDs I- aren't that expensive. As you say this, everyone here is immediately going to FYE, FYE, FYE's website and they're looking for job opportunities. <laughs> because they're awful and you know they're awful. FYEs aren't that common anymore. I think they mostly went under. I guess that's one of the, the nice side effects of, of retail collapsing is you won't have underage girls offering sexual favors to get out of... Oh. We get plenty of underage girls shoplifting in my store, but they don't offer us sexual favors to get out of it. Good. Mostly because we're not really allowed to stop them. I I guess this story is not one you're going to be talking about at Thanksgiving. No. You know, in my family, we have charming old stories about like the time my my father, uh, stole some dynamite from my grandfather and went down the road and blew out the top of his neighbor's pecan tree with a stick of dynamite. I'm sorry. And my childhood's fucked up. This, I wasn't around for this. This was my dad. But he my was. My father never blew anything the fuck up. I mean, yes, he set a dog's ass on fire once, but that was an accident. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, it's yeah. You know, that's that. Even that compared to this story, compared to this shit, that 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 is a charming anecdote. You must admit. Sure. However, the, I'm and like I said, I'm not sure which of these stories is worse. But maybe this one, just by virtue of being Florida, um, it's two o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Well, apparently on the roof. Mom arrested after two year old found crawling on roof. Department of Children and Families said it's a investigating of Lucia County mother whose two year old daughter was found crawling on the rooftop uh, on the roof of a home. Erica Hess uh, posted bail and was released. A home? Not even their home? A home. (laughs) The skater said. Neighbor's home? Investigator said she was inside a home on Van Cleek Drive when her toddler climbed from a deck onto the roof. Concerned neighbor called 911. How how do you not notice that? All I'm thinking, the first thing coming to mind is baby's day out. With the, the 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 kid and the fucking cement and the the, the girders rising and the, yeah. the, the that. I mean kids are fast. Don't get me wrong. Like I babysat and kids are fucking fast. They'll get away from you. So like, I you know I try to be tolerant of that in public places because sometimes a kid just bam they're gone. You know, but after a few minutes you notice that that kid is gone, and you look for them. Get, uh, granted, you probably the first place you check is not going to be the fucking roof. I just imagine the neighbor because this is this is a two year old. They probably got out on the roof. And they saw the neighbor and they're like, hi. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm really tall now. <laughs> Cause see, that two year old probably thought it was the greatest thing that had ever happened to him. Thank God that two-year-old didn't fall off that uh, Her. Yeah, yeah, thank God she didn't fall. But, oh, keep an eye on your kids, people. Keep both eyes on them, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Darth Firefly. Look at me. Mom, are you looking? Are <laughs> Look you looking? No hands. <laughs> and the other one is Lawler. So, yeah, it, the, the first pers- time someone, the neighbor saw this, they're like, Hi! The, the, that, that neighbor probably had a heart attack right then and there. Like, I, remember the neighbors The neighbors from Bewitched? Who the lady was always like... Abda! Abda! Believed her. Yeah. 
and, and her husband uh, never believed her. <laughs> now that oh, would really, honey, come look at this. There's a baby on the roof. Whatever, sweetie. I would be fucking Have with people. Have another Valium. See, it, it, the only reason this would ever happen around me is if I was fucking with someone. You know, if the neighbor was looking, and like, there's a baby on the roof. Then bring the kid in. Someone comes to look. No, I swear to God, there was a baby on the roof. No, the only reason this would happen around you is if you were somehow allowed to breed. No, that's not going to happen. I don't be like, you know, what would be really funny if we put the baby on the roof. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. No, babies do not go on the roof. I guess that's the first thing we learned tonight is babies don't go on the roof. That's a good one. That's one to grow on. Also, sexual favors. Almost never going to get you out of trouble. No, it really, I mean, I'm not going to say never because there are some hinky cops out there, but almost never. Uh, yeah, it's it's contrary to popular belief. Men are not just waiting around for life to turn into a porno. They really aren't. Yes, they are. Let's be honest. <laughs> Some of them are. Some. Some men are just waiting for the day they get to write that letter to Penthouse for them. Uh, they know it's coming. No pun intended. We learn do not disturb the domiciles of crazy people. Yeah, yeah. If you see sign evidence of occupation of a cave or just some other. Just leave that shit alone. Yeah. Your best case scenario is it's going to be some feral survivalist nut. Anyone who's living in a cave is not and living there for a considerable amount of time. Not someone you want to fuck with. Mm -mm. You, you don't go around with a casserole and welcome to the neighborhood. Leave them the fuck. They're in the cave for a reason. Yeah. Just. Let it go. Let that one go. I'm sure you'll find someone else to be a fourth at bridge. Just let that one alone. Um, we've learned that, you know, confession is good for the soul. Just there's there's a procedure. Mm -hmm. There's there, there, there's a there's a path and getting up and announcing to all and sundry. I'm on drugs. I have a hammer. That's that's not that's not. Yeah, time and a place. Time and a place. <laughs> you know, if I ever needed to retitle my show, I think that would be it. Time and a place. There's a time and a place. Yeah, there are some things we cover that there is no time or place for. True, though. true. Like, for like example, setting a vending machine on fire. Setting There's a never vending, a time or place for that. There never. Well, no. I don't care how thirsty you are. One word. Mythbusters. Have they done that? And for what reason? Not yet. What myth is that going to bust exactly? I don't know, but it, it come on. Are there is there an abundance of urban legends about soda machines of which I'm unaware? If anybody could set one on fire with a good reason for doing so, it's the build team. Jamie wouldn't let Adam fuck with that, but you get the other ones all to their own. Yeah, they're just going to set a Pepsi machine to fuck on fire. They just are. <laughs> um and, and we, uh, finally we learned um not only does no one want to see your dick no one's really can no one really cares about hearing about your dick either nobody really cares where it is most of the time unless it's detachable and you left it at their place <laughs> people don't really care too much about its location six thousand calls that is an industrious son i think we also learned that it's entirely possible your childhood was way more fucked up than mine just you're not as open about it what <laughs> your father was going around blowing up trees yes i didn't exist yet he was like 10 yes but i feel like that kind of behavior would not have immediately ceased upon your conception oh what you 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 don't have irish family that live out in the country that do all manner of fucked up shit that no one's going to stop them from like well no you I, yeah i have irish family that lives in ireland 
Yeah, you don't. They, I was about to say, but they don't have those. Gu- they don't have the the whole gun thing like we no. do. No, the, Irish people are not into the guns. Yeah, Here we are. See, I would consider that being a little bit more make me a little more industrious and build some of my own. But so they're more into killing each other via like rugby and sport because <laughs> they are really into their football. <laughs> I just, I, t- <laughs> it's a farm. They have dynamite lying around. Seriously, they did back in that day. Why do farms have dynamite lying around? Stumps. Copper nails. What? That's how you get rid of a stump. You hammer copper nails into it and that kills the root. That's how my dad got rid of tree stumps. Copper nails. Not fucking dynamite. When you're That's trying dynamite. to when you're trying to plow a field, you can't wait for the stump to die. You got to get it the fuck out the way. My dad was the county carry plowing champion. I will have you know. And he never fucking blew up a tree stump with dynamite. Well, that's how we do it in America. It's also how some of us fish. <laughs> 